Okay, so it's been a minute. So, here is GMC again. It's been sitting here for there about three months. Um, oh yeah, so it's sad. It leaked a bunch of stuff out. That's fun. When I was driving it, it really didn't leak that much, but now, you know, it's been sitting here. I guess it's just a wee bit unhappy. Uh, tire's still got air. Well, that's nice. It's good to have that. So I'm going to go ahead and check the oil and whatnot in, even though it should be fine. And then we're going to start it and get it out of here. It's dusty in here. Things never sat long enough to get dusty in here. Okay, so yeah, it's been sitting three months because I've been away at school doing fun stuff. And it has not moved since then, nor has it even been started since then. So what we're going to do, it, well, really, I mean, there's the battery shouldn't be dead. And it's never not started before, except for the one time when it still had the anti-theft on it. So it's probably going to be pretty undramatic, but we're going to get it going and then head up to the shop where I'm going to do some stuff with the bumper and then we're going to check out and make sure that the sending unit that I did about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, make sure that's all still happy in the way that it's supposed to be. So, see if there's any power in this thing. Yep, seems fine and dandy. Get it started in here and see what it do. Not a whole lot of drama. Okay, at the shop, here's the cornet, but 68 is what's getting worked on currently. So one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to fix the bumper on a little bit better because it, I knew it was just welded on before. And it's it's been like that for a long time. Whoever used this truck as a work truck back in the day, I mean, I'm talking like sometime between when it was new and at whatever point in the 70s or early 80s that it got parked the first time. I'm assuming that's whoever whoever was using it then put the bumper on it. Because the other thing is, you know, not the original bed, obviously. It doesn't have the side markers on it, and it's a wood bed. So they must have worked this truck pretty hard back then because they, tore, they must have torn up the original bed, and then this bed was also hit back here and had a giant dent in it. The original motor was obviously very... Very completely and totally worn out. That's been gone for probably 30, 40 years now. 30 years. And they put this bumper on. But I don't care for how they mounted it on here. And I was going to put these bolts in here. But I don't think I have enough bumper bracket. Because right there is the end of the frame. So I only have like 3 inches worth of material to mount the, the bumper on. And how it even worked to begin with is beyond me. Because it's just welded on there. But, I don't know. I'm going to try and figure something out. Alright, next day. Uh, didn't get everything done that I wanted to. We ran into a heck of a lot of problems with trying to fix the bumper onto the frame better. But we'll go over that stuff later. The thing I wanted to point out is, and this seems to be a case that, you know, Nathan and I have seen with, you know, cars that were just want to work and are good ones. Look, that little dot, those two dots there are stuff on the driveway. Uh, they're not from the truck, but not a single drip of anything under the truck. I mean, there's a pretty good puddle of ATF under it in the shop from it sitting, but then I drove it a fair bit yesterday and parked it here overnight, and there's absolutely nothing. So it must be happy again, I guess. All right, so quick update. The plan was, is I thought these bumper brackets, whenever I, I was remembering this in my head, I thought those bumper brackets had about another three or four inches of contact on the frame than they do right now. I mean, because right now, that's three inches at, bo at best. And I'm not sure what happened here. Nathan and I looked at one of the other trucks here and I'm not completely ruling out the idea that they might have actually cut 
the end of the frame just a little bit short because I don't understand why there's also the big gap between the end of the frame rail and the where it's you know I would think that it should run up closer to the bed here you know have more contact on that support so I think they might have torched the end of the frame off for whatever reason and the bumper is kind of welded on there that weld at the front is probably the strong one that's holding it but it's spanning that giant gap it's kind of welded over there kind of welded over here and kind of welded on the bottom and it originally I was gonna just put some grade 8 3 quarter inch bolts through it but there's obviously not enough material there to do that so I'm gonna leave the one bolt on either side that was in there and then I just used the torch and I uh, can't touch them because they're still hot. And I cut up these guys, and we're going to put these on the inside of the frame rail to help brace up the inside of the frame rail because that's also a problem. If I crawl under here. Because I don't want to put a big hole through there because I'm afraid I'm going to remove structural integrity from the, you know, already small section of frame. So we're going to put some structure on the inside of here and see if we can make it work. So this is day four of the one day job. Uh, I got one hole drilled there, and I am currently working on drilling. Uh, I got one almost done right there. You can see it going through, and I need to do the top one. The plan has fallen apart about six times now. I don't even really have a plan anymore. But I found something interesting. Well, I'll come back over here. So I don't know what kind of steel this whole circus is made out of but we've had problems welding to it and it's just been a huge pain you know with this bumper bracket that uh what's welding on right there had problems with trying to weld to that and it's just been a huge pain in the ass to drill through it and i don't know what kind of steel it is but uh it did a thing that i've never seen before focus please there it is so this is a drill bit and i was putting oil on it but I noticed I couldn't get the bolt to go through. And I, I checked the drill bit that it was the right diameter before I started drilling. But as you can see, the part that's all shaved off there, the drill bit made the hole, but in the process, so much material got shaved off the drill bit that the hole's too small. <laughs> the hole isn't a half inch that it's supposed to be because it shaved so much material off of the drill bit as it went through. So I don't know what kind of steel this is, but it is just wreaking havoc on everything. All right, day five of the one day job, it snowed. It's December and I'm glad, I'm glad that the, uh, you know, 50 to 65 degree weather lasted as long as it did. Oh, but I wish it lasted just a little bit longer. Okay. Wow, that was dramatic. Let this thing warm up for a minute. Alrighty, day six of the one day job. So I got this side in and painted up with some core 15. And I got the top part welded there. Got a big giant hole drilled there. That's a three quarter inch hole that runs through the bumper bracket, the frame rail, and the new bracket we added. Come down here and take a peek at that. So there's that big one that runs all the way through everything. And then I got these two ones up here that tie the brackets together. And then come to this side. It's ugly, but it's welded up at the top and everything there and down at the bottom here so it's also welded to the frame rail and then the brackets are also welded to, to each other huge pain i don't know what the deal is with this i mean i've never had to weld a vertical like that or you know upside down like that but golly it was just impossible for me to get right but yeah so here's this side this is about how it was mounted before is 
there's a little bit of weld that runs down here and to about right there. And that was pretty much all that was holding the bumper on the truck. And then there was one half inch bolt on either side. And I couldn't use that hole, I couldn't drill that hole out bigger because of how close it was to the weld. Because I did not, I didn't want to be that close to the end of the frame rail because, I mean, if something happened, then the bolt would just tear through the end of the frame rail since there's not that much material there. So I moved my hole further up in the frame rail and I might try and weld up the old hole, I'm not sure. But yeah, so this side I gotta make the bracket for still, obviously. And you can see how the bracket doesn't sit flush on the frame. That's the gap right there. So uh, I'm gonna use the stick welder to fill that gap in like I did on the other side. And once I have the other bracket in and all the bolts and stuff, then it ought to be pretty good. Good enough where I won't have to worry about it. Because that was the thing is, I mean, I'm not sure what kind of chaos would happen, but my fear was that the two half inch bolts would maybe, maybe hold the bumper on. But if the welds broke, you know, obviously they're going to break when this thing has a trailer on it. And if the welds broke, then, you know, with only one bolt on each side holding it, the bumper's just going to swing down, stay attached to the truck, but swing down. And I just imagine that would be a whole lot of chaos. So I didn't want to risk tearing, tearing the truck up or, you know, freaking losing a trailer going down the highway. I mean, that'd be a disaster. Kill somebody doing that. So, we're going to try this. And, uh, it ought to be more pro than it was. I mean, because the original, the way it was originally, obviously, is held up to this point, so we're just adding to it to make sure that it lasts longer. And even though this end only has the one three-quarter inch bolt through it, that whole plate is sandwiched on the inside of the frame rail, so I don't think it would be able to move. And that plate is not small stuff. Uh, I think that's probably 5 16ths, would be my guess. One, two. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's not quite 3 8 so yeah, it's, it's 5 16 But, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's bigger than the bracket that's on there, so it ought to be pretty good. So, I'm going to put that piece on the other side, mark up where the holes are going to be. I'm going to be smart about it this time, and instead of having to drill all the holes under the truck, which is a huge pain, trying to hold that, hold the drill up in there and whatnot, because it took me about probably a solid hour, hour and a half to drill that three quarter inch hole through both of those pieces of metal. So I'm going to put the plate up there, mark where the holes are going to go, and then use the drill press. And once I have it to where I can bolt it in, then I'm going to weld it. Because I think that would be a much more efficient way of doing it. Having done the op this other side the opposite way. So, I'm going to get on that and then come back when I actually have something done. Okay, so under here. So, that weld is all that's really holding the bumper on. And it had a bolt right there, and I'm going to move the hole up here because if I drill it much bigger, I'm going to be getting into that weld there, and I really don't want to do that. And then I got this plate that's going to go up in there, like that side. And then we'll put bolts through all of it, and hopefully it'll be good. Yeah, not a lot of weld holding that. Alrighty, so bolt is in, two bolts are in, everything's painted. <sighs> Coming back over here. There's the other two bolts. The paint didn't stick to that washer, but whatever, that's fine. 
So there's that bracket. Welded it all around. And then here is this bracket. Exact same deal. Two bolt, well three bolts, two running through both brackets, and then the one runs through both brackets and the frame. So there is that. And then I welded the tops of both of them too, so this should be good now. Thought it was kind of funny. Low beams. High beams. Wow, look at the difference that makes.